Uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen and our viewers at home. Welcome to the uh, regular monthly meeting of the City of Glendale Arts and Culture Commission. Today is Thursday, October 16th, 2008, and uh, we will start our regular meeting by a roll call. Commissioner Lee? Present. Commissioner Jovenesian? Present. Commissioner Solis? Here. Commissioner Wagner? Here. Commissioner Kibanian? Here. Chairperson Gregorian? Here. The agenda for the October 16th meeting was posted on the bulletin board outside City Hall on October 10th, 2008. Okay. Uh, next item, please. Introductions and presentations. There are none. And the next? Next item is consent items, approval of regular commission meeting minutes from August 21st, 2008 at 2 p.m. Okay. Any comments? Anybody wanting to make a correction, a motion? Move approval of the minutes. I will second. Are there any comments, corrections, or everything is okay? All right, let's go on the roll call, please. Commissioner Lee? Yes. Commissioner Devonisian? Yes. Commissioner Solis? Yes. Commissioner Wagner? Yes. Commissioner Kivanian? I just realized I was a absent, so I'm going to abstain. <laughs> Chairperson Gregorian? Yes. <laughs> And you seconded it. <laughs> okay. We need another second, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's okay. Everybody voted yes on it, so that's okay. All right. Uh, the next item. Oral communications. Uh, well, I have one card here for oral communications, and uh, the uh, speaker will be allowed five minutes, and, uh, you know, we may, may ask questions and, um, you know, uh, have some clarifications and ask staff to do certain things, but we will not debate or make any decisions. And the only card on oral communications that I have is from Ms. Margaret Daniel Lake. Is it uh, Daniel? Daniel Lake? Yes. Okay. Right. Thank you. I just want to thank you so much for allowing me to come and make a presentation and sort of introduce myself to all of you. Um, I'm Margaret Danilak. I'm the daughter of artists, and um, I'm the author of a highly rated handbook for fine artists called A Gallery Without Walls, Selling Art in Alternative Venues, which was a featured selection of North Light Book Club and is currently sold out of its first edition. I reside in Pasadena, but have been active in both Glendale, Pasadena, and Burbank areas. And um, in your packets, I actually prepared a folder for each one of you today. I, I guess that there were seven people, um, and I, I presumed correctly. Um, and inside is some information about myself and what I do, and um, also a program that I thought that I would um, mention to you that I've been thinking about uh, in conversation with people in Glendale, residents in the artistic community. Um, Basically, my feeling is is that for artists to be successful, and I'm the daughter of artists. My father was a well-known landscape painter, Robert Stevens, mm -hmm. and um, I believe that they need to be educated in how to sell and market art um, in both without, with and without a gallery, traditional gallery representation. Um, and I've been doing this, uh, teaching for the last several years, teaching artists how to do this. Um, so many artists are not trained in how to sell their art in art school. They learn how to create their art, but not how to sell it. So it's a very difficult uh, path for artists in trying to um, sell their work and make a living as an artist. I had several ideas that I thought I would share with you about how I think that the city of Glendale could help the artistic community. Um, one is to create a, something which we had in Pasadena for several years called the Fine Artist Factory. And it was a model program where um, there was a rental gallery in the front of the business. It was run by an artist. And um, in the center of the space was a workshop space for fine artists. And um, award-winning artists were allowed to come in and um, teach. And then affordable studio space was in the back. And of course, as all of this renovation has occurred in real estate, um, that sort of has, no has knocked out a lot of spaces where artists could actually do their work. So this is sort of a model kind of space that could be sponsored by the city. Um, a phantom gallery type program, such as we've been going on in Los Angeles, you've probably heard about it. Uh, it was actually started originally in Fresno. And what this is is where vacant storefronts are turned into 24-7 art spaces and um, where artists have a chance to show their work and have a once a month reception. 
And um, from that program uh, I've been involved in in the Pasadena area, um, I've sold a great deal of art for my artists. And I have two of my artists here today, actually. I, I guess the camera can't see this, but Julie Snyder, who's been very active and uh, in the Glendale area, and also Mark Vinalia, whose work was celebrated on the cover of the Glendale phone book, the AT&T. Uh, he's the one who actually did those beautiful paintings. Why, why don't you approach the podium, if you like? <coughs> Um, <laughs> I'm actually very proud of their participation in the Glendale uh, art community. Um, I also have an idea to do a Glendale seasonal art walk. Um, much has been done again in Pasadena that would be a um, sort of like a chalk festival or where you block off the streets and you really get people in the downtown area to be behind what you're doing and to understand that they can promote art in that way. Um, a museum of fine art. I don't believe you have a formal art museum in the city of Glendale. So I thought that would be something that would be of interest to the community and certainly would uh, raise your profile nationally and internationally a community center art program where you could use the 40 parks and recreation centers by um, having them as centers of learning, affording rotating wall space for artists to show their work, um, and also, finally, outdoor art shows at community art centers and parks. So you could have regularly scheduled art shows um, in the parks, which you all control. So um, this is just something that, you know, a few ideas of how you could help um, you know, provide venues for artists to show their work. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's well, a lot. While she's, while she's formulating <laughs> all the very good suggestions. And, and, well, know. I've outlined each of them in the packets, and I've actually also given you samples of the postcards that I uh, created, and I actually designed them myself. Um, and I was actually featured in a national postcard cross-promotion with a company called Modern Postcard. All of the paintings and artwork that you see in that, and that I, was not any expense to me. I wrote a, a sort of a fan letter and a, a thank you letter to the president of that company, and that image ended up being put in Art in America, and um, I'm a big believer in cross-promotion, and I think for many of these programs that I'm mentioning here, that private industry, that uh, the press, that uh, businesses would be interested in getting involved in any one or maybe a number of these things that I'm suggesting. Any other questions? Commissioner Wagner, I think, did you formulate your question? I, I don't know that I really have a question, although I would as we, um, as whatever happens with this commission happens and we move into some other format, I hope you'll come, even though you're not a resident of Glendale, <laughs> and share some of those ideas because some of them are like some of the things we've done, like the open studio tour or, um, you know, Unity Fest that moved to downtown. I know a lot of the artists we'll talk about later uh, in, in our open studio tour <coughs> liked the idea of centralizing the the event you know the event um, so it would be wonderful to have you May I share comment? your experience more yes yeah well as an artist and um, I'm also in communication with many artists I think the number one thing that is needed and wanted by artists is venues for exposure because without that then we don't make a living and because of the nature of our work, a lot of us work alone. We're in our studios alone. And so anything that can bring us together as an art community helps not only enrich the culture that we're doing that in the community, but it's also very, very good for the artists, too, to get out and to meet other people and to, you know, um, have ideas, you know, born out of that together. So, um, yes, it would be great. And, and Glendale is a fantastic city. Thank you for the open studio tour. I mean, these things are, are just absolutely priceless to the art community, sure. and so we appreciate that very much. Uh, and we're, you know, it's a great resource. Thank yeah. you. Uh, on the Open Studio Tour, we have an item on the agenda. We will discuss that then, please. And uh, yes, uh, Mr. It's Chapman. interesting that they were saying that Ripsy and, Amanda, Ripsy May and I have talked about art in the park, which she's currently working on, and also actually bring, and she'll talk about Yeah, I, I just wanted later. to add a little bit more. Uh, we met with, uh, I met Margaret at the opening reception. And um, I already owned her book. I knew her from her book. 
and I thought it would be a great idea for me to meet with her. Um, after that, we actually met twice and talked about uh, many different programs, anything that can be new and exchange experiences. And I invited her to be here and share her ideas with you. That's excellent. Thank you. Commissioner Kervanian? I had a question. Uh, I was wondering if you give these, uh, I mean, in terms of what you do, do you give seminars and teach artists? Yeah. Because actually I think that's something that the artists, especially particularly having known so many artists in Glendale, that, that's something that they need. Right. Because they don't, they don't really, may not, they don't know, but they may not realize how to utilize a space to its potential. Right. Being an artist myself, the first time that I had to deal from the, with the business side of it, I was completely lost. I was like a fish out of water. So I, I think it's definitely important for, uh, for artists to get kind of their sea legs when it comes to the business side of things. Right. In fact, I, I thought about the, the beautiful uh, conference room that you have uh, at the brand. Um, you know, you have your gallery, but you also have a conference room area, and that would make a wonderful location for regularly scheduled monthly workshops, workshops lectures. on how it, lectures and workshops on how to sell art, how to market out art, you know, how to follow up with people, how to track clients, how to create a website, um, insurance, framing, I mean, all these different things. And I even, uh, you know, I've sort of we even talked this about the art law, yeah, issues. and art legal law issues. and legal issues and insurance. I mean, it's just it's a business, and you know, the, the so the business aspects this is something that I do. I recently uh, was invited by the Women's Caucus for Art to give a presentation and a discussion lecture at Pharmaca Gallery downtown, and that uh, that was just two weeks ago. So. Yeah, because I, mean, I would love to come and do that for yeah. Glendale. Honestly, that's that's maybe something that we should think about doing, <laughs> although our. Or our, the status of our commission is a little shaky at the moment, but uh, <laughs> but I think that's definitely something that we should look into. I mean, if, if it's not us, then some other department or something should take that over. I mean, maybe Parks and Recs can do it. Okay, could you see this release? That's what I was going to say. Maybe even go to the Parks and Recs Commission because yeah. they have a lot of ideas they want to do in the park, and you know, maybe work with them. And I believe Rich used to have a monthly meeting where you would bring artists together, correct? At your gallery? Oh, my gallery is closed for now. But before you had one, right? Yes. Yeah, she used to have monthly meetings where artists would get going together. To yeah. meet with artists regularly. Hmm. Now. Okay. Any other comments? <clears throat> Well, I'll leave okay. it for the time when we talk about the yes. tour because we do have yeah. spaces like yeah, that we have that to. I discovered. All right. <laughs> Let's keep that part uh, to the later on in the meeting. Uh, and it's very soon because we don't have a very heavy uh, agenda here. But, you know, if you could please stay around, uh, you know, we'll discuss that and then, you know, we'll, we would love to have your input. Thank you. Great. All right. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Next item, please. Business agenda, action items. There are none. Reports. Final report for fifth annual open studio tour. Okay. Is Ms. Marashian going to start? Yes. Okay. As you all know, our open studio tour took place on September 14, 2008, and this will be my final report about uh, final report for the open studio tour. <laughs> Therefore, we uh, prepared a PowerPoint presentation for you. Um, um, it's an attempt to uh, recap some of the highlights of the tour, as well as to share with you our findings uh, from the surveys that we received from the artists. Let me see. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Today we will talk about the, um, this is the agenda. We will talk about the participant information, the marketing strategies that we used to promote the Open Studio Tour, the website, the new website that we have surveys, results, and at the end we will thank some special people, individuals, and organizations for being part of the Open Studio Tour. One hundred forty-eight artists 
and art organizations exhibited their artwork from 45 different locations. A record number of artists and twice what was um, originally anticipated. Some artists opened up their studios and invited other artists to join them. Some others uh, went just solo. There were a group of artists exhibiting their works um, at the Alex Theater, um, at the Brent Studios, Fast Frame, Satco Art Gallery, New Renaissance, and um, uh, White Art Framing and Restoration. Uh, and, uh, and another group of artists showed their work on the sidewalk on Brent from uh, front of the portals. And more than 10 artists were exhibiting their works at the Patrick's Cafe, a Filipino community artist, with, which was um, organized by Zen Lopez. Local artists and a guest artists from neighboring cities like Burbank, Los Angeles, Pasadena, Eagle Rock, um, Art Watcher, and other cities also joined the tour. Every possible venue to create awareness and excitement about the event was implemented, such as press releases, email announcements, advertising, an informational reception for artists. Particip we participated at the cruise night. Um, we had an informational reception for artists at the gallery. We were interviewed by um, local newspapers, magazines, and TV cable channels. We also had um, banners and marquees and GTV6, GTV6 public announcement bulletins to promote the Open Studio Tour. This is the Philippine Times. <laughs> Free maps and flyers available printed and downloadable were distributed to all participants for their own promotion. Flags identifying exhibitors' locations were distributed as well. As you all know, um, the Open Studio Tour is a self-guided tour, but to make it more convenient for the visitors, we also provided, again, the D-Line buses, uh, one from Brand Studios and the second one from Alex Theater, offering two tours from each location. Finally, the fun, educational, and very artsy website with an, <laughs> with an online gallery um, for the so participating nice. artists with um, their uh, portfolios and contact information was created not only to promote the Open Studio Tour as well as to promote the artists and connect them with the art-loving community and um, um, art lovers, art buyers in uh, general. As you can see, this is the home page. Um, unfortunately, you can see the animation, which is in the original home page. But um, if you go to the artist portfolio, artist page, you'll see um, all the names of the artists who were part of the Open Studio Tour. Uh, unfortunately, not everybody submitted their images. But um, if you like to view their portfolios, you can just click any of the names, and this is what you will be seeing. The name of the artist, some of the images, contact information, and the website email. And this information actually will stay there for a whole year until the next Open Studio Tour, which is a great way of promoting uh, the artists in our um, community. And they're very, very excited, very pleased with this. <coughs> uh, those of you who, who missed the tour can visit our website, www.glendaleartsandculture.org, to view the portfolios of all participating artists. The next item will be the GTV6, which are um, very exciting for us. We finally um, were able to have a footage of the event. 
the whole Opus Studio tour was documented and it will be um, shown on on the public channel very very soon. Um, today I will conclude my report actually by showing a footage, which is a short seven eight minute, if you don't mind, of course. Go ahead. <coughs> oh boy, a movie. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very entertaining, I promise that. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, about our findings. We have sent out um, surveys to all artists, all 148, and as of today, we have only 36 surveys back, have been returned, indicating that 1,380 people attended and 4,345 dollars worth of artwork was sold. 27 out of 36 said they would participate again. Eight said they might participate might participate again. And there is only one um, out of 36 that said not will not participate. From my own observations, the north side of the city was much active than the south side. I drove around the city. I, I think Steve, yeah, we share the same um, opinion. We have the same yeah. opinion about that. Uh, I, I drove around the city the whole day and was able to see 64 artists' works and missed all the other 84 artists, which means um, driving around the city, you spend more time on driving than um, being able to see more artists. So there are a few other things that um, actually the, in the south side of the city on Colorado, uh, New Renaissance and Patrick's Cafe, they, the artists in these two areas were um, experiencing a lot of activities. There were many people there. It was organized very well, promoted very well, and um, it depends. So we decided to meet with the artists. Um, it was suggested by them, and we thought it was a great idea. It is a great idea to meet with them, to talk to them, a group of artists, to revisit the concept of the Open Studio Tour and see if there are better ideas to make some changes. And otherwise, um, we feel not every artist received equal amount of visitors. So to make um, more beneficial for everybody and for the visitors and for the artists, to make it easier and more um, successful. Can I make one comment about the north-south? Um, it's If you look at the total amount um, of artwork sold, $2,100 of that was sold actually in the south of Glendale and by one, art, by one art group. So nearly half of it. So nearly half of it. So part of it is some of the work that the artists do to attract people to come specifically to their studio and this and that was um, the the Allens on Chevy Chase um, some of you have been to their studio there's a group of four artists and they're very adept at um, selling their artwork and attracting people Mitzi and Mitzi yeah. Candace Linda and they sold twenty one hundred dollars worth of artwork and they were in the south part of Glendale mm -hmm. How Just many paintings altogether? I don't know. I think there was ten. I think they did ten. Okay. But that's nearly half the amount. So it's, yeah. Okay. Uh, why don't you continue, uh, Rivsima, and then we'll, you know, make this discussion open. Okay. Um, overall, response is very good, very positive. But like I said, we would like to arrange a meeting with group of artists sometimes in November and get their feedbacks, and we'll come back to you and share that information with you. This year, uh, we decided um, to thank every artist and um, uh, and art organizations for participating and supporting the Open Studio Tour, and um, every artist who actually opened their studios on the day of the tour will receive the certificate of recognition. Everything is ready, and it will. It just needs um, the signatures to to send out. Richard, you want to say something? No. Richard, why don't you turn the light on?
I think she's oh, going to be showing no, no, some. Yeah. Oh, there's something. I, oh, okay. I right. also like to thank um, my list for the names uh, is a long one, but um, I I would really like to uh, to take this opportunity and thank all those who helped to make the Open Studio Tour a success, to make the tour possible. Special thanks goes to Alisa Resnick, the senior supervisor of the Brand Library and Art Galleries and her staff. I'm sure you, um, most of you were at the opening reception and you enjoyed that beautiful exhibition, which was done by her staff. Alisa Glickman, the director of marketing um, of the Alex Theater, she was um, very enthusiastic from day one and promoted the event. She organized the group showing at the Alex area and um, did some promotion, had listing on their own website, Alex Theater's website. Dan Lopez was extremely um, enthusiastic and very active. Kevin Hobson, Rex, and Brank, these are from the Information Services Department. I must thank them um, for working so hard. They did an exceptional work to make sure that the, open st the website, our new website, will be ready. And they worked very late hours until the last day uh, to make sure that the website is running smoothly. Derek Martin is from the um, GTV6, and he is the one who um, who did the documenting, uh, videotaping the event, the tour, with the help of Vartan uh, Dilanchian. This um, young man volunteered his time the whole day um, and helped Derek um, to do the film. Lastly, I have to thank Rafael. This is a guy, artist. He was part of the Open Studio Tour, but he made a one-hour program uh, of the opening reception and the actual tour and showed on the Armenian um, TV one-hour program and promoted the Open Studio Tour. We're, we're very thankful <laughs> for, for that. We had students, volunteers from Clark Magnet School and our staff at Park and recreations. Very helpful. Um, finally, it's the artists. Without without them, we were not <laughs> we've been here today. Uh, but like I said, we will be sending out uh, certificates of recognition for every one of them. And to um, at the end, I would really like to show you the footage of the DVD. Restart. This is, I invented a special clay. It is flexible and it is air drying and then I use the colors, for the leather colors on these. They are very good colors and especially these greeting cards, it comes in one box, one card. 
you can send it to somebody they can take it out and frame it forever I got into watercolors about nine years ago, so I'm really still a newcomer. I paint various things. Um, I love to do figures, portraits, flowers, and landscapes. And I paint from photographs and from real life. Almost everything here is uh, obviously nature. We spend a lot of time in Yosemite. We have for many years. And a lot of these pieces, you know, they come out of your mind. watercolor painter, uh, paint mostly florals and some landscapes and some seascapes. I generally like to do very happy white colors with my pieces. Um, I want uh, the viewer to feel like this is something they can hang in their home and they won't take it down the next week. <laughs> They're all composites. They're made up of photographs that I've taken separately. When I'm out taking pictures, I like to look for parts. I'm always photographing things that I think will work together with something else to create an image uh, that's unusual. in series and I have here a selection of two series of my artwork. One is the women series, another is the Buddha series. I also paint silk, which I can do on, uh, a painting on silk or a scarf. It's a wearable art. Photography is my passion. I can't give up. In the last 10 years, I travel a lot. So I do more digital and travel photography. But I love journalism and documentary. I'm on the gallery. On Brand Street, we have our shop, also the gallery. This side, you can see Alexander Sedoyan art. He's the artist, actually, next to me. He's my brother. He's uh, doing lots of exhibitions, lots of um, shows everywhere. I've been painting for 40 years and I'm currently doing this sort of thing which is succulents. This particular piece is the seascape of, uh, of Malibu. 
and um, I like to do a lot of landscapes and seascapes, a lot of California natural looks. I uh, mix flowers with sculptures, used with a lot of props. I just would like to uh, thank uh, the organizers uh, for this great opportunity to be exposed to uh, represent our artwork to the community. We see more people, more uh, artists. I think uh, it's getting better and better. Okay. Anything to add, uh, Rivsima? No. Uh, all right. I think I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Before anything, we have just a card to uh, make a public comment. Let's do that and close, and then we uh, open the discussion. Uh, the card that I have is from Linda Quilly. And she is going to talk about her experience on the Open Studio Tour. Hello, everyone. First of all, I'd like to say thank you very much for having me here today. Uh, my name is Linda Qualey, and I am a 20-plus year resident of Glendale. I have two great teenagers that go to school at Glendale High, and I am an artist. And uh, I paint in acrylics, and I love to paint people in the swimming pool, <laughs> which is kind of an unusual, I have my own unusual little niche. I passed out a card to each of you so you can see an example of the work that I do. Um, I also paint in acrylics, uh, decorative painting on wood furniture. And so as an emerging artist and an artist who's really dedicated to making her art, making her art a business, I really wanted to express my appreciation to all of you for having the open studio tour. This was my first experience and I think I had a really good experience with the tour. Um, I opened my home and I showed with two other artists, my friend Julie Snyder and also another friend Elizabeth Tucker. And uh, uh, first, well, first I wanted to talk about the, uh, the brand exhibition and the uh, Open, yeah, the reception. I thought that that was a really great experience. I thought the art was beautifully hung, and so I thought they did a really nice job with that. It was well attended, and uh, it was a lot of fun. So I, I appreciated the chance to have the exposure for my work at the brand. And then as far as the open studio tour, we had about 30 people attend. Uh, I only advertised through my email list and the other two artists did that as well. So we thought that we did pretty well for our first time. We were on the Beeline tour, so we had about 10 people come off the Beeline bus. And uh, it, we sold one piece of art that day, a painting for $450. And I think greater than that was our chance to gain exposure in the community and to have people start to see my work and the work of my friends. And then uh, the last benefit is definitely the website. I'm so happy to be able to have my art on the website. I think that's just great. And as you were showing that today, I was thinking about how great it would be to have uh, 
ways for people in the community to know that exists, designers, you know, people who are looking for artists so they can go through there and see the different styles of art that are available to them through the community. And the fact that that stays there for a year is really great. And then uh, the last thing that I wanted to say is that it was really a nice experience to get to meet other artists in Glendale. We have a lot of very talented artists in Glendale. I made some new friends. Uh, I appreciated the fact that I got to know some new people and to get to know people on the Arts and Culture Committee. So when you said that the status is shaky of this committee, I thought, no, <laughs> because I think this is really a great place for us to be able to gain exposure with our work. <clears throat> so I would definitely participate next year. I think that we do a few more things to promote it to get more of an attendance. I liked having it at my house, and uh, I would definitely do it again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Julie, did you want to add some uh, uh, on this? Okay. All right. Any questions from uh, Ms. Qualey? Well, which area of the city do you live in? I'm in the north. I'm in the north on Central Avenue, uh, just above Stalker on Central. So we definitely, one thing that was really nice is that some people did take the map mm -hmm. uh, to, the, to the artist reception on Saturday and they made little notes on their map and they came specifically to see our work which really felt great. So I liked, I liked that. Being, a, uh, being able to show in my home, I knew that people came to see our art instead of you know being out on the sidewalk or a place where people are just walking past we we probably had fewer people but the people that came really came to see our work very lovely home thank you <laughs> and Stephen stopped by which was really great <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. all right any more questions from her all right thank you really appreciate your participation and we're looking forward to next year thank you thank you for having me and one little note uh, there was a comment made a couple of comments that this commission might be shaky but whatever it is whatever we restructure we are hoping for the better so Good. you know Good. the activities are going to get better and stronger I hope okay, so we'll good. see how it comes uh, that's that's up to the City Council to decide what they want to do okay. but don't worry about the shakiness of it it's it's going to be better that's good <laughs> right. okay. thank you, thank you. <clears throat> um, well with this we uh, close the comment section the public comment section and open up for the commissioner Julian's comments hand was up. I'm sorry Julian's hand was up yeah I know I, I just I just wanted to say thank you to in particular to Ripsame for her uh, jumping into this and your <coughs> great enthusiasm <laughs> for, and work with the artists so Thank you. Sure. Well, I would like to add all the visits that I've had, I've gone to all the places. This time I followed Richard's pattern. Even though I nagged that day, I did what <laughs> Richard said. So I took my own car, but I missed a lot of the ones because I was trying to map myself. But talking to all the artists that I have met, they were saying that the way it was put together, they really appreciated it. The way they were approached, they really appreciated it. And then the way it, the, it was mapped and people were included was also very interesting. I live in the La Crescenta area, but there were places that I had never seen before. And the way you guys had mapped and put people on the map, I've made new friends in that area, especially the White's <laughs> Art Framing and Restoration Store. It is fantastic. This is very close to what you were talking about. The front store has, they have rooms and rooms of artwork. Um, and and they have rooms for art classes, people, artists who want to teach, and those who want to go and use it as a space to do art. And the guy was so generous and wonderful who would, would walk and explain about every artist and the artwork and the style and the method. He was very well informed. So it was a tour by itself just to be in his place. Mm -hmm. And all the other ones that have gone, they were great. As you said, some are visited much more than the others. And uh, as you said, it was so good that I couldn't resist and buy uh, some one two I think from Farzad actually I went and met his uh, went to his studio it was great wonderful thank you very much Ripsum. and the way you have put everything together is very professional thank you you're welcome we need to of course I would like to especially thank Richard Richard spent so much time putting together that beautiful map a lot of work detailed work and a beeline tour uh, which helped m many people to find their way to the artist's studios. 
Thank you. Now, uh, question. Is there a possibility we will have it in two days? I couldn't catch up within the time frame. All the places, if I don't use the beeline, that's the idea. I could not catch up, and I felt so bad. And I got to um, the Alex <laughs> Theater almost very late. They were putting the artwork away. Uh, so we could be able to see all of them because art is not something that you just walk through. You need to absorb it, so that takes time somehow. We have some suggestions that we should have maybe two days, but um, some other artists, they feel it's too much work for two days for them. It's good for us to get everybody's ideas and information down and come up with new new format. I believe we really need to reevaluate everything that we have. Even though er we had um, double participation, we had good website promotion, everybody was positive, but from my own observations, I really went to see the same place in the morning and then went back in the afternoon to see the difference, to make sure that it's working or if there are any changes we need to do. I was making my notes the whole day. Um, that's why it's too early to make final um, changes, mm. but we have to come back with a new concept, I think. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Kevanya? Uh, again, just to uh, echo my colleagues' remarks, I would love to thank staff. You guys did an amazing job. I was extremely happy to see so many new artists and so many new venues that we hadn't had, and I think this gave us, the entire city, an idea of how much art there really is because we always talk about oh our Glendale is such a great city there's all these artists there's all this and then it's like we had very little participation and now all of a sudden ballooned up to this thing that maybe was you know we couldn't even manage really which I thought was great because now we know and I think believe there, it or not I'm sorry for interrupting you there are more than that oh I'm sure I'm, much I'm sure more than that but 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 I I mean it's kind of like we shook the tree and you know we got a lot more <laughs> things falling down at us this time than uh, we d we have before so uh, I think that's a great thing I th I think we're 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 on track to make this thing into a, a great event uh, down the line maybe in a year or two uh, yeah I, I'm, I'm I was very impressed I I made a list I think of 20 or some or so places that I, I told myself I had to go to, I had to go to. And I think I made it to six. I'm, I'm one of those people that, you know, has to chew his wine yes. when I drink. And it <laughs> takes me a long time to really absorb the situation. Uh, so, but again, I was extremely pleased. And I, I actually, I, I ran into Arlette as, at, at the Alex. So, uh, I'm, I'm very happy and very pleased with the, with the process. I think, I think there is a lot to be, uh, looked into in terms of, uh, what we got out of the surveys. I, I, I did read all of them and I, I think there's a lot to be discussed and there's there's a lot, and I have just talking to people, just asking them how we can improve the process. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot that we can sit and talk about, uh, which is great. But I, and I also, I really enjoyed uh, the the uh, the, uh, opening the opening reception, sorry, thank you, uh, at, at the brand. I just loved seeing everybody there and meeting all the artists and talking to people. I think that's what art, art is about. It's about communication. And uh, it's about getting people out and about, really, even artists. I, I'm a pianist, so all I really know is the practice room. And uh, it's nice to get out and talk to other musicians and all that kind of stuff. So again, thank you, staff. You're welcome. Um, if you noticed, we had more than 350 people on that day. Yes. The turnout was very good. Any other comments? Just one more because, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, the excitement, I mean, going to the sculptor's uh, studios, like Cindy Jackson, she had a variety of uh, work and then at different stages and then she would explain. I mean, you could take your kids with you or if you are an artist, you would learn a lot. Not only it was the visual pleasure, it was it's just not one, two. I don't want anyone to mention names, but it was fantastic. And looking at the kind of art they do and the perfection that they create, it could be something worth in museums, museums all over the world, it is unbelievable. I, it, thanks for this program and everybody who has put together to m help us see what we have, what kind of a wealth is hidden in this city. This is fascinating. There's no word. So you wait because I'll talk too much about this one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Commissioner so, Lina. I, I had a very, very good time. I actually started on the south side and uh, and, and worked my way up north. Um, there weren't that many people, 
but you know that gave me a chance to actually talk to the artist so that that was a very good um experience to be able to to see art and to actually talk to the artists themselves there's a lot of a lot of the times when you go to museums you know van gogh you'll never be able to discuss it with van gogh how this came about or or you know what styles that that that, that influenced them so it it, it it gave me a very very good uh, feel about it um, as I mentioned I, I, I I think we do need at least two days. Uh, I barely made it to 17 locations. Um, out of that, one was not open. Uh, one I couldn't find parking, and uh, one I, I had an older map that that was taken off the map. The one on Hollywell, the one that was displayed that you clicked on. I think it was it was taken off the map, but I, I stopped by anyway oh. when nobody was home. <laughs> So, you know, in, in, in that same essence, you know, I, I barely got maybe 13, uh, 14 artists uh, or, or actually locations that I was able to see, although there, uh, many of the locations had many artists in it. But, you know, I, I really had a very, very good time, very enjoyable, and um, I think this is very effective. And since we, the commission has done this for a few years, uh, you know, it's been getting better every year, so that's very good. And thank you again to staff for the short uh, time that, uh, to put uh, put this all together. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Yes. I suppose this will fit into the uh, sorting through the responses later, but, but I wonder as we look at the suggestions uh, we had that maybe we, we do not just one open studio tour over a couple of days, but maybe regional ones yes. three or four throughout the year. So we have a spring one and a fall one. A and well, I think good. <laughs> we, thumbs up in the audience. I just want to show you. <laughs> we are planning a series of new programs. We can keep the open studio tour and do other alternative shows and programs. One of them we talked uh, about with George Chapchin is the Art in the Park, but I won't go into the details yet. Um, the other, a very, I'm very excited about another um, art show that we are thinking about to put together. It's something very similar to Chuck on the Walk in Pasadena. Um, and hopefully we will be able to do the show by the end of this year. Next, on our next meeting, November meeting, I will be able to give you more information on that. Okay. Any other comments one, on the one open studio? Thing, the quality of art that was presented both at Brand Library and the artists that were chosen, it was phenomenal. Uh, I wish I had more money. Honest to God, it was so hard to keep one's hands away. I would go back and forth, back and forth. I could stop in front of each painting for hours. I wish I had more money. I could have bought so many, so much more. Truly, there were things did that you, you wanted to take home. Not from there yet later on the second day. Yes, I did. But oh. I wish I could have bought more because there were some, like I still dream about it and think about those mm -hmm. that I saw hung, I, which was not the same feeling I had. The pre there were some last, uh, last year also we had wonderful stuff. But this year's it was hard to choose even. It's just looking at the variety and the level of art that was being presented was phenomenal. What's great about having the website this year, even if you miss the show, you can always go back, look at the portfolios, meet with the artists directly, um, go and visit them, and make your purchase. That's the whole idea, to have the website and promote the community artists to our community. Uh, any other comments? Okay, let me make, uh, ask you a couple of questions, and then I have my comments. Um, this $4,345 total sold mm -hmm. is the total of the resp 36 respondents, yes. correct? Oh, so the chances much? are that we might have sold a lot more. It's it, possible. Can, yes. can I also... Go ahead. Well, that, that is true because of the 36 people, there were three or four that said they sold artwork but that did not give us a, uh, an amount. 
Oh, okay. so even within that 36 uh, surveys back, mm -hmm. there is more art sold than the dollar amount. Right, but they okay. just did not. They just did not no, that's fine. I understand. Us. So what I'm trying to get us with these 36 surveys that we got back, we sold more than 43.45, and the other 100 uh, and plus people who did not respond, there's a chance that they have sold some more also. Probably. Okay. Yes. So that's that's what I wanted to establish. So the good news is that we might have sold a lot more than 4,300. Mm -hmm. This is a great incentive for the artists to participate. That's the point I'm trying to make. Um, that's, th th that was the first one. Um, what was the other one? Do you know why the other 100 and plus people did not respond? Is it because a certain reason or just they're just artists with no reason. <laughs> no reason. Can, I, can I give you the history of that? Yes, if um, you would, please. Over the last five years we've done this, we've sent um, surveys via email. We hand them out when they bring their artwork to us. When they pick up their artwork, I email them maybe and two or three times. Artists. So no. they were told, uh, requested many times to do the surveys. This is about the typical response we get. All five years I've done this, we usually get between 30 and 40 surveys back. It doesn't matter how many people participated. So. Okay, great. Usually that's that's not a bad number. It no, it's a great number. It's a great number. Yes. For artists, truly, because they are more of in their yeah. world of things. And so, I did we do? I exception to that. Did we do a um, um, a closing party or something where we could have all the artists back maybe at the brand where they would they are taking their work back and maybe we can at least talk to them then or did we, did we plan that or we are not or are we going to or not uh, mm. want me to answer that question yes because I was there she, she was yes, so I, 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 I handled the end um, we did not do that we had a limited amount of time that we only had three hours that the library gave us to have the artists come and pick up their work. They were very adamant about that. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't any time for a closing sort of um, reception. However, this was a this exhibition was only two weeks in the past. We've had it for a month. I think with a longer time period you could actually build in an ending reception. So it's possible. Yeah. Okay. With with these questions, um, as my colleagues know, I was not uh, in town so I really missed this opportunity to Absolutely. be part of this uh, great event. Um, all I have heard are positive remarks. I've never heard anyone uh, with the slightest negative remark on this uh, 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 program. And I'm extremely pleased. Especially I'm very pleased with the fact that we have a new website where we can uh, uh, you know, feature this. The GTV6 coverage we kept on asking for years and years and now that we have we just saw uh, how effective it could be for next year. And I'm very pleased with that. And I think these ideas of sending the participating artist certificates of appreciation is also a great idea. Thanks, Mr. Chapchan and Ms. Marashian. I think that's True. excellent. And overall, uh, it seems that it was a great event. I, uh, you know, it just, I just cannot stop praising all the people that participated, all the artists. I thank them all, and especially the staff, Mr. Uh, uh, Espinoza and Ms. Marashian, and Mr. Chapchan, who directed this thing uh, through his department. I mean, really, I, uh, all I have to do is say many, 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 many thanks. Um, and if, you, if my colleagues recall, um, I asked to know how many studios or how many artists uh, each uh, um, of our co colleagues visit. So who visited the most place I think or the Steve, most artists? I think Steven. Yeah. I'll put Commissioner Lee? No, I don't. Uh, this time I Do you remember how many? Because Richard told me. I, uh, I, know I, had a, I started <laughs> right about 12.30, I think. I came right after church and spent the day, and, but I only, I didn't, by the time... Do you recall more or less how many? Oh, no. I did Brand. I did some in South Glendale. I did the, the, the gas station. I did a few up in the canyon. So do you know more or less? Maybe eight. Maybe eight. And, Mr. and that was his, and then it was over. Okay. And Ms. Deronision? I did about six, but I could hardly catch up. I know if you had been here, Roswick, you would have did all. Yeah, but you know, next year you need to change your calendar, check our if, time, and don't go to Europe. If I was here, I would have definitely tried as many as possible. But since I promised last time, and since Commissioner Lee is the one who visited the most, <laughs> I promised to bring you a little gift. 
uh, this is uh, I bought this gift in an, in Armenia from an Armenian artist. It is a little pomegranate, and as you know, pomegranate is the symbol of um, Armenian culture. It is um, uh, it symbolizes abundance, prosperity, wealth, and plentifulness. Ooh. So with that. I thank you for attending as many, and I'm going to give you this gift as. Put it on. And this is an artist. Uh, <laughs> this is an Armenian artist in Yerevan. So, you know, I'll, I'll give you this gift, and I thank you for visiting and keeping to your promise. Uh, thank you. <laughs> there you. Could I say something about the number of artwork? While I was at different workshops or, <laughs> or ateliers, and where they did their presentation. There were more paintings given away as well. The artists were so appreciative of the people who were appreciating their art. There were many that when a person bought one piece of artwork, they donated and gave the other one as a gift, and they signed it personally and gave it away. So I know that more art was given to the community than the number and the prices talk about, because personally I've witnessed in three different places that when people purchased, the artists gave other pieces of their artwork as well as their gift so right. so if That's he so wears this he becomes kind of like a phantom gallery or so, those creative <laughs> gallery types he can wear which one <laughs> yeah that piece of art <laughs> probably I don't know <laughs> but anyway um, so I thank you and thank all my colleagues to be there and uh, to do this and the staff and um, I just you know again we have some comments what we have to do is go back and revise and see how we could do it better next year um, and we'll continue our work and yes there is a suggestion of doing maybe every season or something we'll see if we have the staff and the manpower and everything to do it uh, so anyway this this program will still be improving hopefully next year any other comments from my colleagues not regarding this regarding something else which I wanted to talk about if this is the time no, let me let me just finish this uh, item and then we'll we'll go to the comments and then you can talk all right no more comments all right that item is closed. Let's go on the next item on the agenda, please. Update on Diamond Awards. Oh. <clears throat> the purpose of this report is to give you an update on the status of the Diamond Awards. Uh, the original deadline to submit the applications and nominations was um, October 1st. Since we didn't receive enough applications, as of today, I have only 11. Uh, we extended the date until um, October 15th, and just recently, yesterday, I received another one. Um, I have um, one young artist application, community partner individual one, li lifetime achievement two, artist in general three applications, art <coughs> organizations three, community partner business uh, category none. So uh, we will recommend to extend the time date for for um, for new applicants. And actually, I will recommend every one of you and ask you to make your own recommendations and nominations. Um, our um, the, the official ceremony was going to take place in December. The first week of December, with these numbers, there is no way for us to to be able to um, organize the show. But um, if we work together and faster, maybe word of mouth or uh, Richard has been sending out emails almost every week, and it's been in the Glendale News Press. But um, we really need your um, active participation to nominate your own artists, art organizations, musicians, and does it? Do you take into account how? Uh, I, I know that one organization I would nominate, uh, I believe, has already applied. I don't know if, if having multiple nominations multiple, is, yes, is helpful course. to the judges or if they don't take oh, that no, into account. Uh, we, we get, um, I have more than um, six nominations for one company. Every one of their members are sending out the application. Like so um, that's okay to nominate you know, the mm -hmm. same company twice, or the artist twice, or more. Well, if it's... Uh, <laughs> Please do. Yes, Commissioner Solis. I had a question. I know we covered this. But we don't decide who wins, correct? No. 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 There is a judge's panel who will... But last... If I remember correctly, that came before us, and we then decided... Confirm. We could have changed it, but but we usually don't. You know, we but, but we have the power to. 
still well, we don't have usually anymore. usually what happens is uh, we uh, invite a panel of judges to do it usually a commissioner or maybe the chair of the time or somebody who is appointed by the commissioner sits with no vote on that uh, com uh, committee and the committee of judges uh, you know make their uh, deliberations and decisions and um, that usually that comes back to the commission and the commission uh, usually approves that uh, uh, the recommendation so that's basically what the to. process is uh, I don't, don't know if we do or do not have to but anyway it is a, a, a award given by the Commission so I think the Commission has to have a consent on that okay. but basically when we uh, delegate this to uh, specialist and professional judges that is usually good enough for us but we don't have to we don't have to any other comments on this Yes. Well, this is a report, and staff just made a recommendation. Can we still make a motion and do something about that? We can. No, that's actually not a um, business agenda. That's an uh, action item. Or it should have been an action item. Um, you try to say so as of now. Is as of now. That still in December. Still, yeah. Yeah, we can come back to you in November. For okay, so then we could. Yeah, but I think uh, it's, it's, not, it's not an action item. item. We cannot make it. Uh, uh, we cannot make a decision on this. But there is one thing here. The um, uh, what I would really appreciate is if the commissioners make some phone calls to people and organizations and, you know, encourage them to participate and recommend. I clearly remember that one of the people that I called last year and uh, encouraged to uh, participate eventually received an award. And again, I had nothing to do with that award uh, except that I kind of uh, recommended him to participate. But, uh, you know, I think it's quite effective. And when people get these personal phone calls and, you know, the, 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 the urge of, uh, you know, the uh, asking of the commission members, it is very effective. So uh, maybe we should uh, really get to work and start picking up the phone and calling some people. Right now. And again, we can we can direct those people to go to our website. Yes. Can they they can website. download the applications? The applications are on the on our website, GlendaleArtsAndCulture.org. Also on the Parks and Recs Cultural Affairs section, if they can just call us. We will mail it to them. We can fax it to them. So um, so so can we tell them what the new extended deadline is if it's beyond October 15th, which I think is today. Yesterday. Yesterday. Oh, yesterday. Yes. So yeah, didn't, yesterday. Didn't you say it was to, uh, to the end of uh, the October 15th? We extend it from October 1st to October 15th. So are you going to extend it to October 31st now? Do you can think you do that's that? enough time? We, we can should. extend it now. Well, it's about 15, it's about 15 days. 40 more days. You know, we really don't have to make that decision, so it's okay. okay. If, the, if the staff wants to recommend to the end of uh, October, then you should go ahead and uh, do that. Yeah, well, why don't we see what comes in in the next week or so, and then we can come back and make a recommendation in a November um, committee meeting or commission meeting. We have meeting. to extend because 15 of October was yesterday, yesterday and yesterday, we yeah. want to contact people so they would contact the website or uh, Ms. Marasha. So but in terms of the reception happening or the yes, that awards? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so let's assume that it is extended to the end of October. We got only two more applications okay. for you to have an idea. Maybe two weeks is not going to be enough, but we can go ahead and try until the end of October. All right. So can I, um, you know, trust that my fellow commissioners will start calling around and asking people? Okay. Great. Any other comments on this? Any? No. Uh, Ms. Marashan, do you have any comments on this? No, I Actually, okay. Yes, go ahead. So then, so then the the deadline is now extended until October, October, October 31st. October. It's open. Why don't we just then make it to the next commission meeting? So then, okay. by then they can, by then if they don't get anything, we can figure out what we're going to. Oh. We may not, we do. may not be able to yeah. do that because the judges need to uh, uh, convene, uh, see the work, and judge and make recommendations. So that needs a lot of time. Okay. And we'd need time to arrange for the reception and, and all the, the, the yeah. certificates and things like that. Mm -hmm. So October 31st is your uh, new deadline? Yes. Okay. We'll go ahead and send out our emails and um, press releases. She has no idea what she's trying to say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do you mean by that? She does. She does. She, she, she does an excellent job Whatever on this. Whatever you just said is the deadline. Okay. All right. Any, any other comments on this um, issue? All right. Let's go to the next item, please. Commission staff comments. 
Uh, Commissioner Derwanesian, you had something. Okay. I want to talk about what I'm thinking, and I want you guys to help me out because I don't know legally how we need to do this. But I have made a big commitment, and I'm going to stand by it, and that is to make sure that for the month of April, we are going to have the inhumanity of man to man really taken care of properly in the city of Glendale and to start a tradition. I want it to be a tradition in the way, in the magnitude that it deserves to be. We have become, city of Glendale has really taken big strides in the sense of being accepting and celebrating diversity, which was not the common tradition of the city. And we really do appreciate that. And for that very reason, I want it to become the center for representing that issue of how what has happened in the world and how we are welcoming and how we are celebrating different concepts and we are there to support all the different cultures and to understand their history and respect their backgrounds. So for doing that, we need to have, I don't know, a committee, a kind of a group getting together. We need to organize something which should be, if it's the whole month of October, uh, sorry, April, it means that we need to have different art exhibitions, we need to have lectures, we need to have uh, performances, dance, it could be even uh, musicals and opera operas, whatever that is there that people want to explain what has happened to mankind in different times of life to celebrate and to remember and commemorate and to talk about what should not happen. So I would like to see how we need to do that. How do we get artists to get together? How we need to have universities, their department of anthropology and different departments get involved in this? Because we need to have good lectures. We need to have interesting lectures provided for that. So how do we do this? How do I need to put this thing together. You, uh, <laughs> yes, Mr. Grant, you have it. And, and commissioners, you may want to put this on an agenda item because right now it's just brief announcements okay. and, and if you would like to discuss this and, and get the input from your fellow commissioners, yes. how do you so want to put this on the agenda? For next time? I, for next time. That's, that's a great idea, and uh, I think we have an action uh, already approved by the Commission yes. in the past. So if Ms. Marashian will remember to make this as an agenda item for next month, uh, and uh, November until April, we have probably a reasonable amount of time to do this. And we have the commitment by the Grand Library to uh, allow it, so we we'll, we'll take care of that. Thank Would you, you please very remember very to put this on the agenda? Definitely. Excellent. Yes. Thank you. Any other comments? Thank you. Just we'll see when, then what needs to be done. We need to okay. start early. Yes, I agree with that. All right. Any other comments? Staff comments? I'm sorry. Commissioner comments? Did you want to say that? Sure. Good. Um, well, I, w I wanted to thank the the committee and, and the city for its efforts in the Unity Fest, which is a, a cultural piece and, and in which I became involved through, through this commission, I, I think, originally. In any event, um, I, although I was not in the state on Sunday to experience it. Uh, I know that it was a great event. And Felt your thoughts. And, yeah. and I think uh, for me, in addition to the event itself, the work, the opportunity to work with committee members and to get to know the people across the community who put on, whether it's this event or the, or the genocide committee that has formed in the past for those events, uh, it's a, that's it's a wonderful experience. Uh, so I wanted to mention that. Um, I wanted to point out, by way of of cultural education, a, a notice that I just got in my school board packet about trainings for teachers across the district by facing history in ourselves, both on the Armenian culture and the Korean culture, that will be shared with our teachers. And I think that's. Um, I've exp gone to some of those trainings in the past, and I'm, I'm delighted to see those again. I trust, I assume that all of you got this free night, freenightla.com, free night of theater. I don't know. It came to me. I don't know. I'll pass that around if yes, we can we can sign up for free theater. And um, I think, oh, I, I wanted to share... Um, Two other things. First of all, I have been to the Burbank Airport and had the delight of seeing the banner up up there, the, which I think is a wonderful banner, very uh, very soothing. And then I had the odd experience of turning, feeling like I had stepped into the picture, when in 
right at right north of Reagan Airport mm -hmm. in DC there's there's a park Gravelly Point and and I we were playing catch on this big field and the plane started coming over and I thought oh my gosh <laughs> I've gone into the picture but um, I'm really it's it's a beautiful it, wonderful opportunity to have our student artwork from all of our three communities showing at the at the airport um, and I wanted to mention the at the meeting of the Workforce Investment Board, again, this is another cultural piece uh, that we, in which we ought to have an interest, I think. Uh, Ms. Uh, Assemblyman Krikorian spoke to the Workforce Investment Board about um, filming, the loss of, of filming in California and in Los Angeles County in particular. And I was reminded of the survey, the economic impact survey in which we participated <coughs> regarding arts and the importance of arts um, each, whether it's a, a venue or an event, mul the multiplier effect of uh, on the economy for for uh, income to a city, and it's just I wanted to sh remind us to share where we can the importance of building those those economic uh, building the economic impacts, building the economic opportunities of arts in the community. So. I'm, if you see me disappearing before you're all done, it's because I'm going to go watch the cross-country meet. But I think I can stay till we're done here. <laughs> okay. It's at Griffith Park, the league meet. Okay. Yes, Commissioner Kebanya? Uh Yes, I would like to know uh, from staff if we've gotten any indication of uh, whether or not or even when uh, Mayor Draymond's plans for uh, the redesignation of, the, uh, of our commission uh, I mean, what's the status on that? Do we have any idea? Uh, we don't know yet. Okay. No, I think there may be a meeting coming up soon in the next week or two uh, with some staff. So can it be on the agenda for next month? I suppose you could agendize it. Uh, you know, oh, just, uh, I know, just if I know any more, I'd certainly be glad to tell you. But, uh, be because, quite honestly, m my main concern is, is that we're planning all these events, including uh, with what Commissioner Darrell Vanessian mentioned, and uh, it would be... I think devastating to the community if all of a sudden we had to just stop doing all these events. Well, I, I can tell you. I mean, we're going to continue to do events. Um, yes. We've already talked about a number of other events. So no, no, I, I, they I, never I, have. So <laughs> I'm, we're functioning like um, you're here, you know. Yeah. Um, They're functioning like they've functioned the last five years that we've been. You know, in my mind, I do think that even if, let's say, if the commission is dissolved, then it's another form. Nonetheless, I would like a group, a committee formed, and I'm sure I would get the support of the Parks and Rec, and then we already have got the idea of Brand Library being there, that is also there, uh, assigned to us. So a committee either under the commission or if it's not by itself, we would put together. That's why next time when we talk, we'll invite people to come and form the committee and then start to work on it. So events would be there. I wish it would be through the commission so we would have more sort of authority, I suppose, or some kind of rights. But if it's not, I, I do believe that our council members would help us to put, the, put this kind of events on the map. Well, I, I, mean, I mean, either way, I, I don't, it doesn't concern me so much that, um, maybe, uh, yeah. Mr. Grant, bike, Mr. Grant got very close to the microphone, yeah, so I, just for announcements. <laughs> yeah, yeah, w which is, you know, that's that's all I wanted to find out, quite frankly. Thank you, Mr. Chapman. I guess Mike, they can agendize for next week, yes. next month. Okay. Just a report. Well, I don't, I don't really know what to, uh, what is there to agendize, and I will promise you one thing. Um, you know, as you all know, I just got back from a long trip, and I'm still catching up with all the backlog work that is there. I haven't had the chance to talk to Mayor Draymond, but maybe in the next few days I will try to catch him and uh, see what the status is. And if there is anything to uh, put on the agenda, uh, you know, Rip and I and uh, Mr. Chapchan uh, work together probably about 10 days or a couple of weeks prior to our meeting to uh, finalize the agenda, we will put it on the agenda. Well, and if there is nothing to report, if the city has done, uh, you know, whatever they have done, uh, we will put it on the agenda. But if there's nothing, then there is no need to put it on the agenda. Quite frankly, I, I would like to see that from, 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 from staff only, really. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think it's necessary for any of us to go and ha have a chat with anyone, quite frankly. So if, if staff sees that there's anything to report on, Please go ahead and do that. If you don't see anything, obviously don't. Then we can put it on the agenda then. I, did, I don't think there is well, any so need for, to do it now. Well, whatever. We can't okay.
Commissioner Wagner. I had one more announcement I neglected, and and. Uh, can, let's let's finish this oh. item and then. Okay. So are you okay, Mr. Uh, uh, Commissioner Kevanian? Well, I mean, I, I've I, I just brought that up just to, to see if we. I mean, I would like to see anything. If there is anything, if there's nothing that's been discussed, then obviously you're not going to report on something that hasn't been discussed. So, I mean, it's it, it's a moot point to continue the discussion on that. We shouldn't anyway. Okay. One thing which I think is important is for us to understand that we are here, we have things to do, and let's do it until the time comes that we shouldn't do it. We, we shouldn't really consider ourselves as lame ducks or, you know, uh, uh, in hanging in, uh, from the thread or whatever. Let's just do whatever we have to do. And anyway, that's the end of it. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I wanted to add that our our PTAs are in the midst now of the National PTA Artist Arts Competition called Reflections that encompasses visual, photographic, music, literature, and I think there's one other, maybe dance now. But um, I know I'm sure that our PTAs, some of them will be in need of judges because they they try to bring in professionals in, in many cases to help judge the works when they. Uh, after the deadline, and so if any of you out there have an interest in participating, I think if you contact, uh, go onto the Council PTA website, I, which I think is www.glendalecouncilpta.org, or if you go to the school website, you can link on to the, to the schools and their PTAs that you might be able to volunteer. Uh, I know that as a past chair of that event at one of the schools, um, ha having a having ready artists out there to help would be a great thing. So thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Yes, Commissioner Lee. Well, I wanted to thank all the residents in Glendale and elsewhere that attended the Unity Festival. Mm -hmm. I think it was one of the most, uh, most attended uh, festivals that we've had uh, in regards to the Unity Festival. Uh, Brand Boulevard, uh, to me was a, was a good venue uh, as a starting point this year. Uh, so I, I really appreciate everyone that came out and supported. Uh, thank you to Mayor Draymond for, for helping uh, bring uh, a lot of vendors in to, to, uh, to make it more enjoyable. Uh, along those same lines, um, great gratitude to the city for the staff that they spent a lot of hours putting the event together. It, it, it took a lot of man hours, uh, a lot of setup, a lot of logistics. Uh, everybody on the committee, I, I really appreciate uh, the work that was done. Um, and then to also, um, I, I would request to put on the agenda that we look at the original strategic plan and if staff can report what has been accomplished, what has been completed on the original strategic plan, what were what what were short, and then see if maybe we can finish the original strategic plan, at least as a way of of fulfilling our our, our duties, uh, and then and, and then also looking at the future, in and then also waiting to see. Uh, what uh, this new group that is supposed to be set up can help us with. Okay. Yes, Commissioner Solis. <clears throat> this is this is uh, one of us. But next week we vote. Next month is we vote on a new chair. Is it next month, November? Uh, I'm not quite sure. If that's, that's the case, chair. we will put it on the agenda. I think it's in January. But whatever it is, we'll put it on the agenda. Any other comments? Oh, okay. I can add some more. Um, as part of the Chinese Chamber of Commerce, we actually encompass Southern California, although none of our events currently are in Glendale. But I'm looking into that. Um, in, in that same uh, spirit, uh, the Chinese New Year events are starting. We're starting to plan it. Uh, we're having our Miss uh, Miss LA Chinatown um, an annual benefit fashion show on January 3rd at the San Gabriel Hilton. We are having our Miss Helly Chinatown pageant at the Bonaventure Hotel on January 17th. 
Um, Chinese New Year this year is going to be on January 26. So I'm, I'm going to be trying to see what event we can have in Glendale uh, in regards to that, uh, even though there's a small uh, Asian or Chinese population in Glendale. But, you know, it's something that, that, that I, I'm interested in helping to, to, to do in the community. Um, and then uh, that weekend, uh, after right after Chinese New Year, where you, we have our Golden Dragon Parade and Festival, which will be in Chinatown. So hopefully everybody can mark the calendars to see and to enjoy uh, these free, or some of them are paid events, but the festival and parade is a, is a free event that we put on. Thank you. Thank you. And yes, mm -hmm. I just remembered something. Uh, I, for those of you who don't know, even some of my colleagues may not know, I, I'm currently going to Chapman University. I transferred again. Um, and we're having our first performance of Run Out Concerts this Sunday at the Nixon Library and uh, at 12 o'clock on Sunday, the 19th, yes. And then uh, the following weekend, actually, it's probably more interesting. At Chapman University, uh, we're having a very famous uh, bass baritone f who is on the faculty at UCLA. His name is Vladimir Chernoff. He's going to be coming in and singing with us on the 25th um, at the Interfaith Center. And we're, uh, the program is uh, Mahler, Songs of a Wayfarer, which if you haven't heard, it's incredible music. And actually, it's it's a Schoenberg arrangement, so it's for a huge orchestra orchestrated it down to, I think, 13 instruments. We're doing Copeland Appalachian Springs, and we're doing DBC Prelude of the Afternoon of the Fawn. So a really exciting program. Where is the program again? At, at the Nixon Library. And uh, what time? At uh, 12 yeah, o'clock. Okay. 12 o'clock in the afternoon. On the 19th. Yes, on the 19th. 19th. Okay. And, right, the, and the second event is on the 25th, right. Saturday. Thank you. At 5. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, if there are no more comments, uh, are there any written communications? There are none. All right. With that, we adjourn. Uh, I thank you for all for being in the uh, uh, here at the council chambers and uh, our viewers at home for participating in uh, our uh, today's uh, meeting. And I remind everybody that our next meeting will be held um, on November 20th at uh, 2 p.m. at the same place. And there are many, many uh, great art events in the community that I encourage everybody to follow up uh, in the newspapers and the media and attend and support our artists. And hopefully on the um, month of November, we'll give you a, a, a many more new and exciting news on the um, activities of our commission. With that, uh, let's have the meeting adjourned.